guys welcome back to my channel my name is Yetunde aka YBA and in today's video we're gonna be talking about teething in babies you know me I will always share tips personal tips that I have tried that have worked for me Now, if you're a new subscriber, like if you're a new viewer, if you're seeing me for the first time, I make content on motherhood, on pregnancy, on parenting, relationships, marriage, and you know, just a bunch of other things. So if you're into that kind of thing, stay on my channel, click the subscribe button. Uh, and if you're not, you can just stay, you know, just view. I'm a fun person. <laughs> you're going to enjoy this video. So let's talk about teething. Uh, teething is just basically the process that your baby's gum goes through and their teeth or tooth starts to erupt. Now, I say teeth or tooth because most of the time, teething happens in pairs. Most of the time, if you see one, there's another one just, just right behind it. Now, teething can be distressing for babies and for their parents as well. Some babies have all of the symptoms. Some babies have some, Babies are different. Some have a really, really hard time, you know, like a really tough time growing that teeth. If your baby is teething, for instance, one of the symptoms, you know, that can happen is high temperature, fever, and you will feel that fever like if they were to latch onto your nipple. Inside their mouth will be warm, sometimes hot. At what point should your baby start teething? Generally, it starts like around four to six months. I believe for most babies by six months you know you will start you will see one or two teeth already some start as early as four months in fact look i've had babies that have been that are born with teeth i remember seeing this um video you know on facebook a long time ago and i'm like wait this baby was born with teeth or did they edit and put the teeth and then i went to google it and i found out that one in every two thousand babies in the world is born with a tooth or sometimes multiple teeth so yeah teething can happen anytime you start to notice like symptoms you know that teething is coming around that three month mark what most people notice easily is the drooling some people drool so much we have a master drooling baby in our family you cannot even dress up for him you have to put a bib like we have bibs and bibs in our bags because before you know it, that baby is wet. You have to take it off and put another one. So some babies drew that much. You also notice that your baby starts to put their hands in their mouth. Uh, sometimes they do what I call comfort sucking. They really just, they're not hungry. <clears throat> they want you to give them their bottle or they want to breastfeed. And you see, they just stay at the breast and they just kind of chew it around. It's not painful, but it's like the, the gums itch. So they just need to put something in there. If you mistakenly put your hands in your baby's mouth in this period, they will hold on to it like this and they just lick on it. Some babies suck on their toes, you know, babies are very flexible. Next thing you know, toe in the mouth, maybe you're changing them, you just see a little toe in their mouth. And it's like a cute sight, but that can be a sign that your baby has started to teeth. If you have a baby that drools a lot, uh, sometimes the excessive saliva, all the time drooling can cause rashes around your baby's mouth. That's another way to know that, okay, teething is in progress. Other unpleasant ones are like um, high fever. Some babies, it's just the head, like their body is cool, but you see it's like their head can regulate temperature to just be hot, sometimes just right in front here. Changes like, like this just stop eating because sometimes their gums are swollen, their gums hurt, it's red. And sometimes they have trouble sleeping. So a teething baby that is fussy and has a fever will not let you sleep. Will not let you. They just want extra cuddling. You can't put them down. You'll be wondering, ah, why can't I just put this baby down for five minutes? It's because they're teething. Sometimes it goes on for so long. Um, I remember my, my nephew started to drool around the three month mark. And me and my sister had had our kids like, you know, um, around the same time my daughter had not started to drool and they just had about six weeks um, age difference so when she was around his age she still wasn't doing any showing any signs of teething babies are different but guess what my daughter's teeth first two teeth erupted before the person that started to drool first what i'm trying to say is the the symptoms the process of the teething can go on for like 
three months, four months, and you will not see any teeth. Like, you keep checking every day, like, so where is this teeth that is causing this problem? Some babies, it will just be like a week of fever and whatnot, and boom, you have two teeth showing you, you know, pearly white milk teeth is so beautiful. Some babies have um, not so common symptoms, like diarrhea. Some babies, you know, lose weight because they just pull a lot, everything runs through them. So you have to keep them hydrated, you have to help them along. If you know any other symptom of teething that I've missed, please leave it in the comments section. Now, to give you like, you know, a timeline of what you should expect, at around the four month mark, you should see the first two teeth. Uh, and usually the first two that comes out is usually from the bottom. The front teeth, it's called the incisors. Yes, incisors. I remember uh, biology. <laughs> the incisors, that's like the first two, smack in the middle here under. Some babies will just grow the top one, but most of the time, like 99% of the time, it's usually the bottom teeth that will come out first too. It comes out just beside each other like this, so cute. They look so funny, like a little rabbit. And then you have the top two, um, that will come out right in the same position, the top two incisors. And then you have um, what they call the lateral incisor. I think that's what it's called. I'm gonna put the name up here, I think. So those are like the next incisors. So when you have six teeth, you've got four on top and two uh, below. And then you get the other two below. From there, they get their canines and then you get the rest of the molars. And in total, um, by the time your baby is three, you should have a full set of milk teeth, which is 20, yeah, 20. Later in life, those come off and then they get their permanent teeth. Make sure you take care of your baby's like oral cavity, just in general. And some babies get what they call like milk tongue. Uh, this is not thrush. Thrush is different from milk tongue. Thrush is like an infection. Milk tongue, if you, if you just put uh, a nice wet washcloth, you can easily take it off. If it's thrush, you can't take it off. If you scrub it, it might even bleed. That is an infection. You need to take your baby to see your doctor. So just as a rule for your baby's gums, once in a day, you should take a clean wet washcloth and clean their gums and clean their tongue. It makes them at least more, if not anything, more receptive to the concept of brushing or cleaning their teeth when they finally start to grow teeth. By the time your baby is one, you have a minimum of four to six teeth. If you don't have any teeth at all, it's still considered okay, but do take your baby to see a pediatrician to rule out that there's anything wrong. But generally, most babies, by the first birthday, uh, you will have at least four. Now, let's go to how to help your baby cope with all the stress and symptoms that I've just talked about when it comes to teething. My number one tip for helping a baby that is teething is that you should prepare. Watch this video, for instance, before your baby starts teething. Learn all of the things you need before your baby starts teething. It pays to know what you're doing already, at least a semblance of it, before teething starts. The reason is because, you know, when your baby is distressed, by extension, you are distressed. It is very possible that you will just be willing to try anything put the wrong things and the right things. And there are wrong things, you know? And so it's important that you stay prepared, stay alert, like be ready for this teething thing. My number two would be to buy teething toys and rings. Um, teething rings and toys, I'm gonna put a picture here or here. Um, these are just like, they're this little, little soft, most of the time made with silicone toys. They look like toys, but they're actually really soft. Not a fan of the ones filled with liquid. Uh, some of those ones filled with liquid have been known sometimes if it's not made with good materials to burst. Now, I don't know what they put inside. Anyways, get some nice cute teething rings um, toys. Um, those your baby can put in his or her mouth and chew on and chomp on whatever, you know, to help them with the eating and the sore gums. You can refrigerate them. Cold things help. So, you know, when you wash, uh, sanitize the TV rings, you can just pop it in a, maybe a Ziploc bag. You just put it in a, a clean cup, put it in the fridge. Do not freeze teething rings. One of the things that causes some teething rings, you know, those ones I said that have water to break apart is because some of those materials disintegrate when you freeze them. Also, you don't want your baby to get like freezer burn on their mouth. So I just wouldn't recommend freezing. If you don't have electricity, constant electricity, 
Cook it, put it in the freezer, but time it. Not more than five minutes, bring it out. And then you can give to your baby. Remember, teasing rings are meant to be washed, cleaned, sanitized. So you have to have a bunch of them. Um, uh, there's this um, harness, or should I call it an, a harness? It's like a thing. Some people put it around the baby's neck. Um, that I do not recommend because of choking. Babies have a way of twisting themselves into funny positions that you'll be wondering how they arrived here. And so because of that, anything around their neck, around mm -mm, I do not recommend it. Some binkies, pacifiers, have attachments that you can attach to a baby's cloth. You can do this just so the teasing ring doesn't fall off, fall on the ground, especially when you're going out. But it is safe to have minimum of two so that if one falls, while you're washing and sterilizing that one, you have another one to use. Another thing I'm going to recommend is a baby fruit feeder. I'm gonna put a picture up here. It looks like a pacifier, but it's not a pacifier. You can open it up and you can put fruit inside. I recommend cold fruits, um, pineapple, uh, a banana, just a banana, a piece of banana, watermelon is a great idea depending on your baby's palate depending on the baby's age if your baby is less than six months old and you're doing exclusive breastfeeding you cannot give them all of this stuff i'm talking about buy the baby feeder it is a life saver <laughs> the reason why i recommend the feeder as against giving them the actual food babies are at risk of choking the swallowing system they, theirs is not fully functional yet. That's why they regurgitate food. They, you know, they throw up, they spit up, and all of that fun stuff. Except you, you can't find the feeder, you can't afford it. Then I would say, give your baby fruit pieces, but don't make it small. I used to give my, my daughter, when I didn't have a fruit feeder, I used to give her uh, a cucumber. So I would just peel the green, off the top of the cucumber I give her the whole thing not a large one something she can hold you know if you get baby cucumbers do it something she can hold but at the same time she can't get to the seeds but it's cold it came straight from the fridge she just plays with it and plays with it and you know cucumbers are very hydrating so you can give that to your baby cold carrots peel, peel it wash it very cold give your baby things like grapes I would not recommend it, except you have a feeder because grapes is, you know, it's small. It can cause obstruction and we don't want choking. Please, if you're going to feed your baby fruits, don't make it into tiny small pieces that are that can choke the baby. Let it be long, you know, big enough that the, it cannot go through here. It can only just stay in the mouth. So now I want to talk about finger brushes. One of the first things you can use, aside from using a washcloth, the first toothbrush you most likely would want to buy for your baby is the finger baby brush. Picture here, it's like a silicone sleeve you can wear on your forefinger. You can wear it on any finger, but most of the time I wear mine on my forefinger. And it's got like this tiny brush part here, and that's what you use to kind of brush your baby. Now you see this thing, it's made of silicone, so that's the great thing about it. If you can buy more than one, I would recommend it. Buy like two or three, sterilize it, just put it in a clean bag or in a clean cup. Or uh, if you have one of those um, formula containers, you know those containers we used to put formula if you're going out, put them inside, put it in the fridge. If your baby is distressed, wear one like a sleeve. You're not brushing. I mean, it can be like you're brushing, you're cleaning their mouth, and at the same time, you're offering comfort. It's not going to last long, maybe like five minutes tops, but it's going to do something. So just use your hand. Yeah, definitely get a finger brush. So let's say your baby is distressed at four months, and you're a mom who is practicing exclusive breastfeeding, and you cannot, you're looking at yourself like, how am I supposed to give this baby fruit? Because I want the baby exclusively breastfed. I have a solution for you. You can make breast milk popsicles see your breast milk wash you see i keep saying wash and sterilize sterilization is important for babies please sterilize just buy a nice little ice tray you know small one silicone if possible and you wash it you sterilize it and put some breast milk in there put it in the freezer when it's frozen it doesn't have to be hard like a little rock no just you know just frozen you know and then you put it in that baby feeder and then let your baby lick some breast milk popsicle that works like magic you can do the same thing with formula not just breast milk just constitute your formula like you normally would and put it in, a, in an ice tray pop it in the freezer and bring out you know a cube 
put it in the <laughs> in the fruit feeder and give it to the baby and your baby can just use that to cool down their gums and everything the final remedy i usually get to this remedy last this is like my last resort medication personally i don't like medication i also don't like to pump children full of medication all the time medication relief is temporary especially when it comes to pain fever it works for a few hours and then you have to keep repeating it some babies are very difficult to give medication to they just sort of aspirate it and they start coughing and also you can give your baby paracetamol uh, i know that doctors sometimes also uh, prescribe ibuprofen uh, ibuprofen especially if your baby's have, uh, gums are visibly swollen. Ibupro I, I think ibuprofen is uh, anti-inflammatory medication. So not only will it help with the pain, it can help to reduce the swelling. And now, I am not a doctor. Before you give your baby medication, kindly see your doctor, okay? There's something I want to talk about, something that causes a lot of controversy. Teething powders and teething gels. I have never used any of those stuff, that stuff for my kids. And it's because part of the things that makes up teething powder and gels is called benzocaine. I will find it and I'm going to put it up here. It is something that is not good if ingested by your children. Now, high doses of the benzocaine has been known to cause a lot of other things in children, seizures and you know, a bunch of stuff. I don't want to scare anyone. It is hard for me to tell my two-year-old when we brush to spit toothpaste out. There's no way you will not leave residue or remnants. But our moms, our grandmas, and I know they're going to kill me when they see this video, they recommend it all the time. Ah, low bongella, low titting powder, you know all those things. I'm not a medical doctor, I'm speaking solely based on experience. And in my experience, I believe you should just go and see your doctor. I recommend a lot of love. This is the time to cuddle, to hold, to back, to wrap, whatever your baby needs. Don't listen to all those babies, it's too clingy, put, put the baby down. No, a baby can never have too much love. It's a baby. That baby doesn't know what's going on. They're just uncomfortable. So give your baby a lot of love. I wish you best of luck in this teething journey. And if you have any more questions for me about teething, drop them in the comments section. If you want tips on pregnancy, tips on breastfeeding, tips on how to be a new parent, see, I have a bunch of videos. I'm just going to keep linking them throughout this video. You should check them out. All right, bye-bye. And no, I said I was going to stop saying bye-bye. Au revoir. A bientôt. See, go and watch my previous video. I'm many French. A bientôt is uh, see you soon. Au revoir. See you soon. Bye-bye.